Hey everybody, it's Joe and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a review of LG's LDFN 454 series dishwasher. So you ready? Let's get into this. So we've had this dishwasher for about a month and a half now and that's given us enough time to really torture the thing and give you a really good, accurate, real world review. So what we'll do first is go through all the features with you, then we'll show you how well it worked, and then we'll give you our takeaways. The entire control panel runs across the front fascia of the dishwasher at the very top. All the controls on the left are for selecting what type of cycle you want, and all the controls on the right are for customizing those cycles. So going from left to right, we have our power button. Makes a nice little song there for you, and that just turns the power on and off. And then we have our cycles. If you use the auto button, the machine will automatically sense the size of the load, the amount of soil, and the toughness of that soil, and customize all the settings in order to best fit that. You'd use the heavy setting for really dirty dishes and hard to clean dishes. Or you can hold this button down for three seconds and you would get the machine cleaning. And what that is, you'd run a cycle with no dishes in it and it would clean the machine and get rid of all of the sediment and everything else that's built up in it. The delicate setting you'd use for fragile stuff like stemware and china. Normal would just be a normal wash. And if you hold that down for three seconds, you just get a quick rinse instead. A turbo wash would be a really short cycle, but it would also be a really high powered cycle. And the express would be even faster than that. And a download cycle would be one that you actually sent over from your smartphone. If you look at the center area here, we've got a timer and some icons. The timer is a countdown timer to tell you how much time you have left in your cycle. And it'll also tell you when it's done. Also, when you're flipping through all of the options here, it'll show you how long each one of those is gonna take before we start. As far as these little icons go, this one up here will tell you when you're low on rinse. This one here will tell you when you do to clean the dishwasher. Up here is a little lock icon. When that's lit up, you can't open the door. And this down here will tell you when the night drying is turned on. Now on the right side, we have the cycle customization buttons. You got dual zone. If you have this active, it'll increase the water pressure in the lower zone and it'll decrease the pressure in the upper zone. Then you have your half load button. So you select that and you can see arrows here for the top and the bottom. For this, if you're just running a half load, either in the top or the bottom tray, you can specify that here and it'll only run that sprayer. Here you have energy saver mode, and this will run the machine a little bit less powerful, but it'll also save a lot of energy. If you hold both of these buttons together for three seconds, it'll turn on the control lock, and that will basically make all of these buttons inoperable when it's in use. That way you don't run the risk of accidentally changing settings by rubbing up against the front of the dishwasher as you're walking by. High temperature will increase the water temperature to aid in cleaning. The extra dry option will increase the drying time by 20 minutes. And if you hold it down for three seconds, you get night dry. You'd use this feature if you're running your dishwasher late at night when you're going to bed. And then during the night, it will go ahead and run a fan every so often to keep condensation from forming on the dishes that are in there at the end of the cycle. That way you don't get any mildew buildup or anything like that until you have a chance to open the dishwasher and put your dishes away. Delay start will let you customize when you start your dishwasher. So you can actually set everything up and then maybe do a delay start for three hours or something like that. And then that way, if you're in the living room watching a movie or something like that, you can go ahead and have all this set up and then go up to bed whenever it's done. And this will go ahead and start at the specified time without you having to come over here and hit the start button. And then over here, you have that start button. And if you hold down for three seconds, it will cancel whatever cycle you're doing at the moment. Over here, you can see that LG's direct drive motor has got a 10 year warranty on it. And what that is basically is it's a simplification of the drive motor. There's less parts in there, therefore they're more reliable. Is basically all you need to know. Up here, we have the SmartThink and the tag on emblems. Basically the SmartThink app is an app you can download for your phone. And tag on basically you, means that you have to use NFC on your phone and then pull up this app really close to the door here and then the phone app will communicate with your dishwasher. This dishwasher doesn't have Wi-Fi, so the only way the app on the phone can interact with your actual dishwasher here is to have that phone in close proximity to your dishwasher. Inside the washer, we have three trays. We have a silverware tray at the very top here and it's got its own sprayer built into the top of the cabinet here. And if you're putting silverware in here, they kind of go in this way. And as you can see, you would be able to fit probably all the silverware you own into this thing all at one time. And if you're gonna put in a serving spoon or something like that, it would go in there like this. Next, we have our second tray. This tray is adjustable up and down by pushing these two buttons in, and it's got three positions. It's got all the way down, you've got a midway, and then all the way up. 
and that's so it can accommodate different size cups and so on and so forth. It's got its own sprayer attached to the bottom of that tray, and it's got two sections of these pegs that can be lowered or raised. So you can accommodate larger stuff or funny shaped stuff. Next, we have our bottom tray. And on this one, we have four sets of those pegs that actually go down, just like on the other tray. So that actually opens this entire area back here, open to flat things like big pots and things like that. And then you have your silverware tray that can actually be removed or can be left into the dishwasher. If you were to take this out because you needed more room for pots and such, then you still have that upper tray to do your silverware. So it really adds a little bit of versatility to this machine. In the top, you have all these holes here so you can put your silverware in vertically. And these baskets open up as well, and they're all compartmentalized. So if you've got lids to water bottles and, and small kitchen tools, measuring spoons and that kind of stuff, they can all fit down in there. Down here, we got our soap dispenser. Put the soap in there, it clicks closed, and then it'll pop open automatically and release the soap in there for you during your cycle. And over here is for your rinse. You fill your rinse up right here. You don't have any visual representation of whether it's full or not, except when it's kind of coming up out of here. So you don't quite know when it's full until it comes bubbling out. But you'll know when it gets low because that indicator light will come on and blink on the control panel when it is. Inside the tub, you can see it's all stainless steel. And we got four sprayers down here at the bottom. Also in the bottom, we have a removable filter here. And that can be popped out. And you can take this out and clean it every once in a while. Just be careful not to bend this because it is probably a little bit on the fragile side. But this will really help ensure that you don't get chunks of food and stuff into your lines. Another feature of this dishwasher is that you have these side mounts here. And what these are for is if for some reason you don't have anything to mount the dishwasher into running up underneath the cabinet. Which in my case happened because we got wood running along up here. But I've got nothing over here on the other side of the dishwasher, so I was only able to put in one screw. Well, this plastic insert can be popped out and I can drive a screw straight into the wall this way and then pop this back on and we're good to go. So that's a cool thing I wasn't even thinking of and it ended up saving me a lot of time having to build up something underneath here to screw into. So that's a cool feature I wasn't expecting and it turned out really handy because otherwise I was gonna be over at Home Depot getting wood so I could build up something for this to screw into on the top. As far as performance goes, we went ahead and ran all the different cycles with various sizes of loadouts. And what we focused on mostly was heavily soiled stuff. So we ran several cycles where we overloaded the dishwasher with a whole bunch of stuff, got it really dirty and let those plates and glasses just kind of sit around and let the liquids and food and everything just kind of dry up on their surfaces, just so we could simulate a worst case scenario. And honestly, it's not really a worst case scenario because this is pretty much what everybody does every time when they wash their dishes anyway. And as you can see, the results were pretty astounding actually. There were a couple of dishes here and there that had a couple of small things still stuck to them. But for the most part, everything came out really clean. As you can see, these glasses and bowls and plates and everything look totally clean. There's no residue whatsoever of anything left over on them. Keep in mind, we are using a rinse also, so we're less likely to have water spots or anything else like that. But that would probably be the same for just about any dishwasher that you get. Also, this thing runs between 42 and 46 decibels, which is on the quieter end of dishwashers. Our kitchen opens up directly into our living room and we were able to run our cycles and sit in the living room and watch movies and so on and so forth without being distracted really at all or hearing the dishwasher running. So that's a big plus because our last one was so loud that we had to wait until we were ready to go upstairs before we would run that thing because it was just too freaking loud. As far as critiques go, this thing here with the app, it's a little bit gimmicky. Um, since it's not using Wi-Fi, I'd actually have to bring the phone over here and have it set right here next to the machine in order to use it. You might use that once or twice and then you'll never do it again. If this dishwasher was Wi-Fi enabled, then I can use that app to see the status of a wash or to send over custom cycles that way, then it might be something that I might possibly use. But in this case, probably never gonna use it. And most of the function on the app, you can get just by messing around on the control panel anyway. Our second gripe was on the rinse compartment here. It is pretty messy when you're trying to refill this thing. I wasn't too terribly stoked with the design and you really can't tell how full it is until it's full, full. So unless you're pouring stuff in here really slowly, it's gonna pour in, fill up, and then it's gonna spill over the edges right away. I do really like though that it has the indicator light on the control panel to tell you when it's low. So I'm not really sure how upset about that I am. But in any case, something like that's not gonna be a deal breaker for this dishwasher. The one really annoying thing about this washer 
is the design of these tines. Everything looks fine and dandy when it's empty, but you'll notice that when you put things in here, they don't really fit all that well. If you've got different size cups and things in here, you'll see that you have to set everything in there in just a certain way, like this cup here. You'll see that that can actually kind of tip over pretty easily and kind of doesn't want to go there. It, I guess it kind of wants to be over here, but not so much on this side. Then you get down into your bottom tray and you'll see this works really well for things like plates where they'll fit in pretty much anywhere you want them to go. But for bowls, they have to be just right. Like this little bowl here, there's not really, maybe you can put that, kind of put them up here, but you'll see again that, well, they can fit over here, but not really, because they're just kind of just barely fitting in there. I don't know, maybe over here, something like that. I mean, you can fit stuff in, but you see nothing really fits anywhere really well. You gotta just kind of search around to find the spot that they'll go in. And if you're putting these big bowls in here, they don't really fit anywhere really well. In this case, they might fit this way, but they're kind of stuck in at an angle. So if I wanted to put a second bowl in there, it's gonna actually kind of sit over here and rest on top of that one in order to get them to fit. Either that, or you have to set them just kind of flat down here or something like that. But then that kind of cuts off room. If you're running small loads, it's not really gonna mess with anything. The only spot these fit really well are kind of right over here. And if you try to put them in this way, then they're gonna pull water down here because they're actually kind of sitting back. So you'd have to kind of do them that way. I mean, it's not really a problem for most stuff, especially if you're not running very large loads. But if you're loading this dishwasher up really full, then that's gonna get annoying really quick because you're gonna run out of places to put certain things because certain shapes are only gonna fit in certain areas. As far as price goes, this dishwasher is actually really competitive. Our criteria with the dishwasher was basically just three things. The black stainless steel, price, and having that third tray up on top. And when you narrow down that far, there's only a handful of options. The LG wasn't the cheapest option, but it was pretty close. At the end of the day, it's a dishwasher and your main focus is for it to wash your dishes, obviously. But this will wash your dishes well, it won't break the bank, and it looks really nice. Not to mention the fact that it's pretty quiet. So even with the negatives with the app, the rinse compartment, and the dish configuration, we still think this dishwasher is a great value, and if you pick one up, we think you're really going to be happy with it. If you want to learn a little bit more about Joe's Phenomenal, you can visit us online at joesphenomenal.com. I thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your busy day to watch our video, and hope to see you again really soon. So until then, my name's Joe, and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.